Hi, I'm Jill Reiner. I'm a junior at Denison University, and this is my project from the Big Data Bowl, uh, evaluating and clustering coverage skill. So getting right into my motivation and a little bit of an overview, I was motivated by the question of how can we better evaluate members of the secondary? And so to do this, I split a plastic play into three separate stages. Uh, the first being ball snap to ball release, uh, the second ball release to ball arrival, and the third ball arrival to pass outcome. And my analysis was framed upon two models. Uh, the first, a target probability model and a completion probability model, uh, both using all passing plays from 2018. And then using these models, I came up with three separate stats, which I then used to cluster defender types. So getting right into targeted receiver probability, uh, which basically asks the question, out of all receivers on offense, what is the probability of each being targeted? And so this can be used to evaluate a defender in the first stage of a passing play, from snap to ball release. And the variables I included in the model were the receiver's distance to the closest defender, uh, the distance to the quarterback, and the speed um, of each, the receiver and their closest defender. And then from this, I created a stat called targets averted, which essentially is an aggregation of the differences in target probability in these two stages. So as an example, just looking at number 12 here in dark blue, Brandon Cooks being covered by number 24 in light blue, Trevor Williams. Um, and at snap, Cooks has a 22.4% chance of being targeted. And then at pass forward, he has a 16.2% chance of being targeted. And so the target probability difference in these two events is negative 6%. And so if you aggregate these differences for each defender on each play, where they're staying with the same receiver at both events, uh, I came up with the stat targets averted, which essentially means how many targets the defender took away from just his uh, coverage in the stage of a pass. Moving to completion probability, uh, this can be used to evaluate a defender in stages two and three of the pass. So from ball release to ball arrival and then ball arrival to pass outcome. And it has similar variables to target probability. Um, we just added the X, Y coordinates of the receiver and the yard line as well. And so from this, I created two stats, uh, closeout and passes defended, uh, which again are just a sum of the differences in catch probability in the stages we're looking at. And so they basically measure how many passes a defender takes away. So just to look at another example, uh, number 18, Cooper Cup here in gold being covered by Desmond King, number 20 in light blue. Uh, at pass forward, he has a 90.8% chance of catching the ball. And at pass arrival, he has a 90.4% chance. Um, and so the difference there being negative 0.4%. And so just like target probability, just aggregating these differences for each defender uh, where they were the closest defender to the target um, and just came up with closeout and passes defended, which again, just represents how many completions the defender took away in these stages of the pass. And then moving into the clustering, once we have these three stats, uh, I cluster then define specific player types. What's most notable is that cluster two is really where you wanna be as a defender. They're good throughout all phases of a play, taking away targets, breaking up passes and closing in on their receiver. And so there you'll find your Stephon Gilmore's, your Jalen Ramsey's. So yeah, cluster two is really where you want to be. And then finally, some use cases and future work. So first of all, so how can this be used? Uh, one, to evaluate defenders on a more granular level than we have currently. Two, to identify weaknesses and strengths of individual defensive players. And then this could also be flipped to look at receivers. So you could see where receivers are strong or weak in each stage of the pass. And then on that same note, to inform matchup decisions. So let's say receiver X is really good at increasing his target probability. You'd probably want a DB who's good at suppressing target probability. And then some future directions. Uh, you can look at these stats in man and zone and also performance by route type or game situation. So thank you.